What's up everybody? Jeremy Gerard from Mythic Customs here with one of my short customizing tutorial videos. Today's video, I'm going to talk about the concept of planning out your painting projects. It's a lot of P's, right? Planning out your painting projects. So this is the idea of thinking about whatever piece you're going to paint and kind of breaking it down into the component steps and thinking about the paints as different layers that are going to go on. Um, the reality is the layer, the, the order that you put the paints on are going to play a significant role in how easy that part is to paint and how good the final product looks. So before I paint anything, I really try to look and think about what the different steps I want to approach. Uh, to layer on R. And that idea of layers is incredibly important. So whenever I start painting, you, you if you watch my videos, you know I'm a big fan of dry brushing. I do a lot of dry brushing. Um, anything that I dry brush, I'm I tend to want to do that first. I tend to put that as some of my base layers. And the reason for that is dry brushing is not a very precise uh, type technique because you are you know brushing on the paint you know lightly it allows you to build it up slowly over time but it is definitely hard to get very specific areas you're going to get some bleed there are going to be areas that as you paint you paint over areas that you didn't mean to get that paint on that's totally cool if you check out a video I posted recently about painting skulls, I actually address this. I talk about dry brushing and how sometimes when you dry brush, you're going to get paint on other areas that you didn't intend to. And that's totally cool because you're going to fix that later. So let me show you an example here. This is a custom skull Wendigo head that's available from legionshop.com. This is a piece that I worked on with Tristan from Immortal Collections, printed by Noble Bear Customs. And it's very similar to what I was talking about in that skulls video. This is a skull just like that. When I paint this, the first steps that I do is I dry brush on a couple different browns. I dry brush on um, actually this one here, this yellow ochre color. And then over that, I do kind of a wash. Both washes and dry brushing are not super, super precise uh, techniques. Well, I don't want those browns to get on this back here area of the skull, but inevitably when I do dry brush, I do get some of that coloring on the here. That's totally, totally fine. What I do is I plan it out, I layer on those base colors first, and then I go in with a much finer brush and I paint over any of the areas that I didn't mean to get paint on. So in the case of the Wendigo, stuff like the antlers, especially around the base, all of that here, you can look and you can see the edges of the here on this sculpture. Those are all areas that I would have dry brushed on top of that I then fix after the fact. Similar with the teeth. All of the teeth, I dry brush on top of those, not worrying that I'm getting paint where I don't want it. And then I paint on top of it. So that's part of thinking about the layers. When I do the skull, I think about that first base layer of the yellow ochre. Then I do the, the wash of the darker brown. Then I paint all of the teeth. Then I paint black on the hair and on the antlers to get them to a nice consistent color. Then I do, you know, the dry brushing of the gray on the hair to get that effect that you see there. And let me bring up a better picture of this. That you'll be able to see. Better picture that I'm not holding up right to the screen. So you can see here, this is that Wendigo skull, and you can see those nice clean paint breaks. Specifically, look where that hairline is, where it connects to the, the, the actual skull. That is not something that I did initially. Like when I dry brushed, there was absolutely some of those colors on that here. But by thinking about it in terms of layers, doing one piece, layering it on, and then painting over the pieces that may have gotten some over, over paint on them, you can absolutely create these nice breaks like that. Um, I'll show you how I do that in a moment, but another example I'm gonna show you here is actually with eyes. So one of the things whenever I do eyes, uh, a lot of times you see like Mythic Legion's eyes where it'll be a flat color like the, the orcs or the goblins, but it's like rimmed 
in black. So you'll have like a yellow eye and it's rimmed in black, right? You may be tempted to paint the eye yellow and then try to outline it in black. And if you've got an incredibly steady hand, you might be able to do that. I've always found that to be incredibly difficult. I always get a little shaky and it never looks the way I want. And it's a super easy way to adjust just by thinking in terms of layers. Instead of thinking about a yellow eye outlined in black, think about a fully black eye with yellow in the middle. So just a different way of thinking, but it works really, really well. Let me show you what I mean here. I'm gonna actually have the head that we're gonna look at. We're gonna look at this head here. This is a fun kind of ogre head. The character is called Momo. This was designed by my buddy, Lord Stephen Bishotti, sculpted by Emil Wickman and printed by Wolf King Customs. And this was a fun piece. I paint matched it to the Argamides paint colors. Let's see if that focuses here. I paint matched it to the Argamides uh, paint colors, but I really want to show you how I did the eyes. That didn't really focus very well, but that's fine because I have a better shot of it that I can bring up right here. So if you look at this head and specifically at his eyes here, you'll see that what I did is they've, they've got that nice yellow middle and they're outlined nice and black and it's really nice and clean. So what I did in this example is what I just mentioned. I painted that eye black first. So the whole eye area was black. And then with a very, very fine tipped brush, I went in and I did just the yellow eye. When you paint eyes, I find you've got to be very, very deliberate. You don't want to do half measures, get some paint on that brush and just be very confident and just give it that little dab, okay? That's how it looks like this. In this particular case, what I did after the fact, and let me take this off screen for just a moment. Um, to get that glossy look, I actually use this piece here. This is from Model Masters, Model Masters Acrylic. This is like a semi-transparent gloss. I actually have it on my channel about getting that, that wet look on things. I absolutely love this. I use it for eyes. I use it for horns and teeth, different things that you want to have a glossy type effect. I don't actually use a gloss paint. I still do use my acrylic flat paints, but then I put a little bit of this on top and it looks great. That's exactly what I did here for the eyes that you see. But that idea of layering, that's what I'm trying to get across here, planning out your paints to put them on in layers. So if I zoom out a little bit on this and I talk about the layers here, the first thing I did with this was that, that base color, right? So I did a paint match and I don't have the exact formula that I use to match Argamides, but I put together a couple different paints to get something close to Argamides and I dry brushed this on to that black base. I started with that black base, that's a, a black sprayed base coat that I like to do. Um, dry brushed on this, really, really measured to get the look that I wanted. Then I started layering on some of the other colors. Now that dry brushing, it absolutely got some paints I didn't intend in the eyes, in the nose, on the earrings, and on those horns. All of that. When you dry brush that, all of that's going to get the color. But now I'm going to start laying those colors on top. So the next thing I did was take a different color and I painted those horns. And then I took another color after that with a little bit of a wash to give it some of that darker color. I took some silver here to do that earring, just a fine tipped piece to do the earring. That's another layer. I already talked about the eyes. For the teeth here, I did those teeth similar how I did the horns. Then I did the tongue and the gums with that pink. And then once all was said and done, I used that gloss effect to do both the eyes and that mouth and that tongue a little bit on the lips. So it kind of looks like this character is kind of drooling a little bit. So thinking about that in terms of layers, that's exactly what I am talking about here for you to plan out on your customs. I'm gonna show you what I mean a little bit. I'll actually do a little bit of painting right here on screen. Let me move the camera so you can kind of see a little bit of my paint area here. Um, I'm actually gonna paint one of these dinosaur heads. So I'll show you what, I, what I'm going for here with the dinosaur head. That'll kind of give you an idea of what the, the end product would actually look like. Bring this screen up here. So this is the dinosaur head that I'm talking about. This is another product of Legion Shop. This one was sculpted by Walter DeMarco of Mass Customs. So this piece here, if you look at it, you can see that I've got the red 
of the actual dinosaur's head, but then where the horn is on the front, where the horns are on the back, and then certainly the beak area, those are all different colors. Well, when I dry brush this on, there's no way that I'm not going to get some over you know, kind of paint on those specific areas here. This is a finished one. So not only did I, uh, you know, fix the overpaint after the fact, I also did a little bit of a brown wash to get the effect you see there. Then I used that gloss technique on the beak and on the horns. But that's what I'm going to show you right here. This is actually what we're going to paint. I've got one, this dinosaur head is fully based out in black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my red and I just use a Vallejo flat red on this, shake that up. I'm going to put a little bit in my paint tray here. Actually, it's a little jammed, so I put some of this in my paint tray. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a brush. I like to use one of these big flat brushes. These are testers brushes. This is a size number 10. And what I'm going to do is I just take this piece right here, dip my paint in the, the paint tray, and then I rub it off on a paper towel. You can see this paper towel has got a ton of red paint on it because I've been doing a bunch of them. You can see them kind of behind me here. But what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to very lightly layer that paint on. And I'm not being careful. You can see here, I'm not worried about getting it on the horns. When I have to get around that face, when I have to get around the, the horn there and the nose, look at what I'm doing. You can see that I'm getting paint all over that thing. So you can see that all of that area there, and again, let's see if this focuses. All of that area, you can see, look at that beak, look at that horn, all of that I'm getting extra paint on and I'm not worried about that because I'm going to fix that after the fact. So right now I just need to lay this base coat on. Dry brushing is something that, like I said, it's nice because it's, measured in the fact that you're only putting on a little bit of a time, you can really, really dictate the, the intensity of the color that goes on in a way that you can't get if I just glop the paint on, um, but it is very imprecise. Now, after I'm done with all this, I having painted these a bunch of times, I know what to expect. I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to come on and do a second coat a little later. But eventually, I'm going to get to the point where it's done, and then I'm going to do this. I'm going to go back to that, and you can see on this example here, I actually went in and I took black paint, and I fixed the horn, I fixed the beak, I fixed all of those horns on the actual head itself. That's what I mean by layering paint. This mess that you just saw here, that's layer number one. Layer number two is going to be really similar to try to intensify the color. Layer number three is going to fix all of the overpainting I did. Layer number four is going to be me doing a little controlled brown wash on those black areas just to get a little bit of texture. Layer number five is going to be using that gloss. Break down your projects into layers. Break them down into logical steps and what you will find is that you get much better results, you get much cleaner lines, you get a much more measured and deliberate overall paint project. Um, hopefully this helps, gave you a little bit of example. I don't often do painting actually live on this show, but I've, I've heard a number of people say it would be helpful if you actually could see that. So hopefully this helps you. If you do like videos like this one, if you find them useful, certainly let me know by giving it a thumbs up. If you have questions, hit me up in the comments. I make it a point to answer all of those comments that require an answer. Um, and of course, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so, so you will be notified whenever videos like this go live. Until next time, I can't wait to see what you make.